On to question number five. Chaz McConnell, you will answer first. You have one and a half minutes to respond. What are your plans to protect Grand County's water? Um, James said a little bit earlier, um, I, I wish we had three hours to talk about this because this is, this is how long it would even take to just touch the surface. James also said that, um, you know, it's, they've said, the, the big water companies on the Front Range have said, it's our water and we're going to take it. Well, I guess my only question would be is if that's the case, and they're going to take this water and it's going to completely destroy our streams and rivers, which it has to this point, why is there an EPA? Why is there a Clean Water Act? Why is there a 1041 NEPA process? Um, I think that um, we need to try to, uh, as Claire Levy was leaving and Randy Bumgarner, there's, um, there's this Basin of Origin le legislature, le legislation that was going to probably be at the Capitol or will be at the Capitol next year. We need to work at that. We need to try to work with these water companies and say to them and appeal to them that if we have a bad snow year and the reservoirs are empty, they have no mandatory watering down there, it's going to devastate our rivers. Like it or not, it's going to devastate them. I know that Commissioner Newberry has got everybody at the table and they've sat down for the first time in forever to try to figure out what are we going to do to fix this problem. It's a very, very complex problem with a lot of moving parts, but something has to be done. And I think that we need to let the people on the front range know they have got to conserve. Even when there's water, they've got to conserve. And if they don't, they're, they're going to kill our rivers. And they already have. Thank you. James Newberry, what are your plans to protect Grand County's water? First of all, I'd like to tell Chaz that we have not broken the law for the past few years. We do have a balanced budget every year. It's against the law not to have a balanced budget. We have uh, had reserves based on conservative uh, budgeting, so that's a, that's a misnomer. Uh, the EPA was not even in existence, or the, uh, or the Bureau of Reclamation, none of these people were in, uh, it's not Bureau of Reclamation, but when the Moffitt Project went in, there was no permitting process. And the permitting process that's in place now only evaluates the incremental impact of what they have taken, let's say they've taken that 70%, and that incremental impact. It's not the entire impact of what's happened on the river. So you start from a negotiating point that you're way behind the eight ball, especially with Denver Water. We've gotten people on that uh, been able to get to the governor and get to some of our state legislators and put a little pressure on that they would come to the table and try to uh, do enhancements to mitigate past sins. But as far as them having to do anything, no, they don't have to. Same thing with the uh, Windy Gap Firming Project. They look at the incremental impact. That's it. The rest of it has already been negotiated uh, many years ago before we ever started on this. So we're trying to squeeze what we can out of a process that, that we started off behind the eight ball. And, and if you go and, and ask the people in the water community what Grand County has done, they are amazed at what, how Grand County has positioned themselves and gotten water and being able to do the things we do just through a cooperative process. So it's, uh, it's nothing short of amazing, and the more you can read about it on our website, uh, hopefully you can educate uh, or find out more, and, uh, and it's, it's truly a, uh, an un unbelievable process that I've been very proud to be a part of. Thank you. Merritt Linky, what are your plans to protect Grand County's water? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with a little bit different approach here too. I was a teacher for 12 years, so I'm gonna talk about some numbers a little bit. 80% of the population lives on the eastern side of the Continental Divide, but 80% of the water falls on the western side of the Continental Divide. So therein lies the problem. That's why we came up with all these trans-basin diversions, what well, was way, way back starting in the 18, late 1800s. The problem is that people didn't understand about water back in those days. We have four young men and women sitting up here, and let's just say, for example, they have the right to divert water. Each of them has the right to divert 10 out of a stream back up on the North Fork of the Colorado, okay? They have the right to divert 10 CFS. That's 40, right? It's not, because what really happens there is that we get the recharge back into the aquifers of the system. If you divert 10, and you divert 10, and you divert 10, and you divert 10, you're really getting the second person there is getting half of probably what you diverted. The problem is, is that when you go to sell those water rights in a trans-basin diversion, 
they sell all 40 of it. And really, there's only probably about half of that actually in the stream. Because people didn't understand that back 100 years ago when they sold all these water rights. So they over-adjudicated these rivers. These are past sins. And as Commissioner Newberry has said, all we're doing at this point is really trying to play catch up. Because we do have private property rights that we need to protect. But yet, as I said earlier, when our private property is affecting someone else's private property, that's where we have the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, for question number five, Rob Rankin, what are your plans to protect Grand County's water? I think probably first and foremost would be to continue to work on coming up with the agreements that are in place. The water rights have been sold. They were private property rights that those property owners chose to sell to those interests. I've had the opportunity to, within the last week, walk up to the Grand Ditch. There's still an active flow that's going to the East Slope that started in the late 1800s when we thought it was okay. The water issue for me that is the one in terms of our public water in particular is the clarity issue for Grand Lake. When we look at Senate Document 80, which was signed in 1937, authorizing the Colorado Big Thompson Project, that has in tremendous recreational value for this county. But it also has some unanticipated consequences in terms of the organic growth that's in Shadow Mountain that's getting pumped through Grand Lake and has clouded it significantly in terms of one of our true natural resources up there. I've learned more from James Newberry in the past six months in terms of water and from Lurleen Underbrink Curran, the county manager, than I ever thought I could. And I'm only about ankle deep so far. My plans to protect is to learn more and be as supportive as I can with the agreements. Thank you very much. Rob Rankin, you will respond first to the next question and you will have a minute and a half. What changes would you anticipate to making to the Grand County administration if elected? Please be specific. I had the opportunity as superintendent to work with 24 different school board members over the course of the 12 years. And there were many times that school board members would come on and they say, okay, I've got these changes that I want to go ahead and implement or make to the system. And there were a couple of them that I was the subject of change at times. But as they sat and learned the role, learned the issues, they realized that it maybe wasn't as bad as they thought it was, or that they realized that, that there were certain rules and regulations that had to be followed. My changes to the administration at this point would be none. I believe that the county has run very effectively and efficiently, that I have known the county manager since she was in the planning office and I worked with her as, uh, in my role as superintendent of schools when we worked in terms of some of the, uh, the developer's costs um, that were implemented. She has a solid career and history. I believe that there's some great importance in terms of institutional history. But I'm going to go in, look, listen. And I also believe that the role of, of the commissioners are in terms of policies and the overarching part and that the day-to-day -day operation of the county belongs to the people as far as the county manager and the department managers. Thank you. Merritt Linky, you're up next. What changes would you anticipate making to the county administration if elected? Please be specific. You have a minute and a half to respond. As I said earlier, probably the first thing that I would do if elected is to try to learn as much as, as possible and try to meet with all the department heads. Probably the only change that I would like to see in terms of administration is to, to bypass the county manager step. I, I think our county manager is great. I think she does a great job. 
I really do. She's very knowledgeable. But I also think that the, the, all the department heads, including Road and Bridge, Social Services, all of them should report directly to the commissioners. So there's not a filter there. So we can have one-on-one -on -one direct conversations with those department heads. And then let those people do their jobs. I would not choose to micromanage. I would not choose to tell those people how to do their jobs best. As I said earlier, if you surround yourself with good, qualified people, and then let them do their jobs, things can certainly work a lot smoother. So that would be my first step, is to try to learn as much as I could, and then initiate a change to where department heads meet directly with the commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Newberry, what changes would you anticipate making to the Grand County administration if elected? Please be specific. You have a minute and a half to respond. At this point, I, I guess I would say none. I have been to, we were at a debate the other night, as a matter of fact, when uh, both the candidates said that they would go through, look for efficiencies, look where we might need to cut people, where we might need to do uh, more streamline and figure out ways to save money with the county. Uh, on the way home, I really got to thinking about that because these are two Republicans that were saying that. And I got to thinking, I think I'm the only Democrat over there. So I think they were saying that the Republicans have not been fiscally responsible in all areas and there's fat to be cut within the Republican organization. And I, I couldn't quite come to grips with that. So <laughs> I, I found out today that every elected official is a Republican. Every appointed official, except one who has very little flexibility in his budget, are Republicans. So uh, that's, a, isn't that a, that's a great thing. And, and I'm going to stand up for those Republicans. They are doing an outstanding job. They watch their money. They watch their budgets. And any time that we can privatize something, we privatize. We try, to, we try to run efficiently all the time. These guys are doing a good job over there. And you've elected them. And, and, and they're responsible to you. And I'm proud to work with them. I'll tell you, I might be the only Democrat over there, besides the only other guy, but uh, they, do, they do a dang good job. Thank you, Mr. Newberry. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Mr. McConnell, you will have a minute and a half to respond as well. What changes would you anticipate making to the Grand County administration if elected? Please be specific. Well, first of all, I'll say I'm very proud to be a Republican. And um, James, maybe you should come over to our side. We're a nice bunch over here. Um, as far as efficiency in government, James brought it up, so I'll be happy to address it. Yes, I think there could be more efficiencies. I would go department by department to make sure everything been is being done efficiently maybe, efficiently. maybe there's some savings there. I've been on the campaign trail for 11 months now, and I've talked to thousands of people. And there's one question out there that I get asked over and over and over. And I'm sure it, you could probably guess what it is. And it's, what about the county attorney? What about the relationship with the county attorney representing the county and also having a private criminal practice? Is there a conflict there? Well, I don't know if there is or isn't. But one thing that I would do is, if elected, is uh, I would have those questions answered. If the citizens of Grand County are asking that question over and over and over, because they feel there is a conflict, well then let's get to the bottom of it. And if there's a conflict, then some changes are going to have to be made. All right, thank you very much. Now we move on to our closing remarks based on a coin toss. Um, let's see, Merritt Linky, you're up first with one and a half minutes. Again, thank you, Middle Park High School, and thank you for the Sky High News for helping put this on. Again, thank you, you guys, for sitting up here and, and helping to moderate this. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things going on in Grand County, of course, and I know we, hopefully everybody's got an insight as to some of the issues that have came up tonight. And what I could say about that is that I, I have a kind of a diverse background and I, I was a teacher for 10 years, I think actually 12 total. I was two years at the college level. And plus, I've grown up in a ranch family environment. When I got out of high school, um, I went to college, and got an education, became a teacher, 
and, and was gone from Grand Canyon for, for quite, well, well, actually from college years, probably for about 16 years total. And I chose to come back here. I could have lived anywhere. I lived in, in Alaska for a summer. I lived in Seattle, Washington for a summer. I lived in Nebraska for a summer. I could have gone anywhere. I chose to come back here because I wanted to be here. That's where my roots are. That's where my family is. And, and, and I came back here first to, to be a teacher, but then I, my dream was to, to start my own business. And that's what, I, that's what I was able to do here. And I start and built my own business from the ground up that supports me and my family today. Grand Canyon is a great place to live. It is a great place to, to enjoy all the recreational opportunities. But it's a, also, for me, it's a great place to do business. And I would like to see that continue as county commissioner. I would do everything I could do to facilitate that opportunity for everyone else that wants to try it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Rankin, you're up. I would do want to thank this guy, High News, for promoting this, organizing it. And Middle Park High School, you make an old, withered school administrator proud. Um, it has been most enjoyable. Experience lowers the learning curve. It doesn't make up for talent, doesn't make up for passion. But when you've been down the road before, you've had the, the public comments, public involvement. If you've dealt with it before, it makes it a little bit easier the second time around, or the third time around, or the nth time around. I have the experience in terms of working in a large governmental organization different capacity. This is going to be an incredible learning curve, but it's going to be a little bit lower. I've been involved in the community. People ask when I retired, well, where are you moving to? Not moving anywhere. We're invested in Grand, Grand County. And I've had experiences in all parts of Grand County. I still believe that our economic development needs to occur, but really from the people that live here to get that stable situation. That our water is important, but I'm in favor of the agreements and in favor of the continued negotiations and not litigation. I believe that the people are still the most important element of an organization and that the county's got to be able to recognize the employees that are there and work with them. And we've got to look out for those unintended consequences. We want to be able to not create the kind of problems for this generation that sometimes we've created, or others were created for us. Thank you very much. Chaz McConnell, one and a half minutes. I guess it's been pretty tame to this point. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that happened. But again, I just want to make a comment. James is going to have the last comment here about the county attorney. If there's a conflict of interest, there's a conflict of interest. Period. So I just wanted to point that out. It's nice that James is de um, defending him, and if he was one of my employees, I probably would do the same thing. Um, as I said earlier, I announced I was going to run about um, 11 months ago, and I've driven uh, lots of miles around Grand County, talked to lots of people, and I'm after even after 33 years of living here, I'm in total awe of Grand County. You drive up to Kremlin uh, along the Colorado River, I drive up to Grand Lake. Look at the lakes. It's just unbelievable. The, uh, there isn't any place that I would rather live on Earth, except in January, than Grand County. Um, to be able to solve problems, I think you need to bring people together to listen what they have to say. And the most effective leaders listen more than they talk. Uh, as a commissioner, I would do exactly that. I would listen to what you as a constituents would have to say to me. I know there's a lot of thoughts. There's a, everyone has a different idea of how things should, uh, should work. Good, good or bad, I would want to listen to everybody. Transparency and accountability um, has been part of my campaign since I started. Um, my website, mcconnell2012.com, I have addressed just about every issue that, that could possibly be asked on my website. So I encourage you to go there and to take a look. There's a lot of information there about water, there's some TV interviews on there, there's some school rankings, and there's a lot of other information. So. I encourage you to go there. Um, if you have a question, my number's on there, please call me. I'd love to talk to you about um, your issues of concern and, and concerns about Grant County. Um, 
I believe it's time for new ideas, new enthusiasm in the Grant County uh, District number one commissioner. And um, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. All right, Mr. Newberry, one and a half minutes in closing remarks. Thank you uh, again to all of you. You guys do an outstanding job. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, this is a nonpartisan position. I'm sorry. Everybody wants to bring in the political game into this thing, but you do not make a decision at the county level, local level, based on party affiliation. I'm sorry. I've, I've never seen it done in the 16 years, and all the Republican commissioners that I've been dealing with, I don't see it happening. So if, if that's a fear for you, it shouldn't be there. Um, I think 16 years ago when I got there, it was uh, kind of a day-to-day uh, hand-to-mouth type operation, we put a plan in place. We've had some things thrown at us too, the water, the landslide, the having to, being ordered to build a new judicial building. We did all that. We did those things. And I started over there with 250 employees. Right now we have 250 employees. Some of that people, people have left through attrition. We have added a full-time professional EMS department. That was a vote of the people. That's 40 new people that came on. The math is we're, we're down about 210 employees from where I started. It was a mandate to put the EMS in, and I think they do an outstanding job. I'm proud of our employees. I'm proud of my record, and I will continue to work hard for you in Grand County. I, I love this county. I love serving you as constituents. And it's one of the most re rewarding jobs you could ever have. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, I guess I will say that uh, what you don't really understand what Grand County brings to the table until, and some of you have experienced this, a loss in your family, and how this county comes together and backs you and does things. I will forever repay this county for the blessings that they have given to me and my family and I thank all of you. Good night. And thank everyone very much for coming, and Mr. Dean. Thank you very much. Um, curious, how many, how many people are still undecided? How many people have already voted? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're encouraging our students to uh, do their homework, to come to events like this to get on.